going to do problems uh, 9 through 15 odd from chapter 8 physics. Uh, now, sorry about the, um, these problems are slightly annoying, um, because, more annoying, I guess, than physics problems might usually be to you, because they're referring to um, diagrams on the previous page, so I'm going to flip in that page back and forth. Uh, like this one, um, this diagram, uh, 827 for problems 2 and 9, we got this roller coaster type situation where I got, looks like it's going up like that a couple times, and then it goes up a hill, it's only half as much, and then it just goes whoo, up, I don't know how high. So this is, um, what do they say H is? This is 42 meters here. There you go, maybe that was the question in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. How high is the hill on this roller coaster? 42. Um, and we've got a little roller coaster car up here. It's got some velocity coming over that hill, and it's got a mass of 825 kilograms. All right. Oh, and its uh, velocity that way is uh, 17 meters per second. Okay. So in number nine, um, what's the speed of the car at point A, point B, and point C? And those points are point A, point B, and point C, and there's no friction. So, um, all right, we're ready to go here. So, um, conservation of mechanical energy, uh, that's what we're talking about. So here, first of all, what does it make sense to take as the zero height? Now, there's two choices here that I think are both pretty good. Um, you could say, well, look, it's, it's never going to go lower than this. So let's make that the h equals 0. That's probably the best choice. You could also um, say, you could kind of change it. If you were doing the how um, fast is it going to go at point B, then here it is here, here it is at point B. You could make the, this the 0 height for that part of the problem. And then how high does it go up this? Well, then you could make this the zero height, and you're just finding the, those heights relative to different um, h equals zero. I'm going to go ahead and make h equals zero. Uh, I'll keep that consistent for all of the parts of the problem. Um, okay, so for part A, um, how fast is it going at point A? Well, I don't know if you want me to do any math or physics here or not, it's going 17 meters per second when it gets to point A because the um, here it's going to get faster, right, because the gravitational potential energy that it has here is going to turn into more kinetic energy until we get all kinetic energy at the bottom. Let's make some of those little pie charts. So here I've got kinetic energy, 17 meters per second worth, and I've got gravitational potential energy, 42 meters worth. And then when I get to the bottom here, uh, this is my zero height, so that's all gravitational potential energy. And Oh, sorry, <laughs> just kidding. All of the, what I meant to say is all of the gravitational potential energy has turned into kinetic energy because I'm at height zero. So that 42 meters worth has now turned into more kinetic energy. And then I get back up here, and I'm going to have a little pie that looks exactly the same as that one. Because I've got 42 meters worth of gravitational potential again. So if I didn't lose, if, if there's no friction here, if I didn't lose any energy, then that slice of kinetic energy must be the same as it was here, right? Because that's the same. That's just mgh, mg times 42. So that's got to be the same. And that means the velocity there has to be the same. Um, so there's not really any equi I mean, you can write an equation there, I guess. And then when it gets to B, now I've got a smaller slice. 
of gravitational potential energy, and then that means the kinetic's going to have to be bigger, which makes sense, right? Be going faster there. At C, uh, that's the same as this one right here, all kinetic. And then there's some, like, mystery point D up here, uh, which is the highest that it ever gets. And the highest that it ever gets, what makes that point the highest? Well, that's where it turns around, and when it's turning around, the velocity is zero. So it's got to be all gravitational potential up at that highest point. Okay, so I think those energy pi's will um, allow for us to write the rest of the equations that we need. Um, so for part uh, B, how fast is it going at point B? Okay, so I'm going to relate everything back to this first pi. So here, the kinetic energy at the start plus the gravitational potential energy at the start. I'm just going to subscript those initial is equal to, right, that's that pi, equal to here, the gravitational potential energy at point B plus the kinetic energy at point B. I know subscripts, it can make things look kind of um, intimidating, but it's really helpful to, um, obviously, you, you can't just like k plus u equals u plus k, right? You have to uh, have some way of clarifying what the heck you're talking about. Okay, so here, this is one-half mv initial squared plus mg, uh, the initial height, is equal to uh, mg, whatever the height is at b, plus one-half m velocity at b squared. And that's the thing we're trying to find. So I want to just point out one thing here, that um, since there is a linear m term, in other words, kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy both depend um, on the first power, the linear mass, right, mass to the first power, the mass cancels out everywhere from this equation. And so the answer to part uh, E what if we put a second car with twice the mass? What would the answer? So all the answers for A through D would be exactly the same because the mass cancels out. It doesn't matter what it is. Now, if there's a spring involved um, in your energy problem, 1 half kx squared, that does not have mass in it. So then mass does matter, right? Which makes sense because if you have a heavier mass compressing against your spring, you're not going to get as much height when it launches the object into the air or velocity. Um, so, no springs here. Okay, so um, what do we got here? So this is, gives me 1 half times 17 squared plus uh, 9.8 times 42 is equal to 9.8 times 21 plus 1 half times the velocity I'm looking for squared. And... Uh, Really going to make me do that? Okay, fine. This is a little bit below my pay grade, but for you, I will do it. So uh, if you notice, if you subtract that over here, you're going to get uh, 9.8 times 21, right? Think about the algebra that's happening there. So I've got uh, half of a 17 squared. That's not... Half times 17 squared plus 9.8 times 21. Uh, and then I'm going to have to multiply that by 2 and take the square root of that. So I get that the velocity at B is about 26 and a half meters per second. Um, that point. C, down here, all of this, that's my one-half M. I'm, I like writing these equations like this. Because I've already set all this up, I'm not going to keep doing that for this problem. But in general, I think that that's a really good practice. 
an mg, uh, the initial height, and then at point C, it's going to be all kinetic energy. So that's one half m velocity at C squared. All right, so that's the same this. That's one half. Oh, and the m's cancel out again. Don't need to worry about those. So one half times the 17 squared plus 9.8 times 42. Write it out because I'm not subtracting that term off this time. And uh, I need to multiply that by 2 and then take the square root of that. And that gives me about 33 meters per second. Um, part D. How high does it go here? So that would be when all of the kinetic and potential energy, mg, which at the start, all turns into potential energy over here. So the m's cancel out once again. And uh, what do we have here? We have. This is my 1 half times 17 squared plus 9.8 times 42. And then I'm going to have to divide that by 9.8 to solve for that. So it gets up to about 56.7 meters. And, you know, make sure that your answer makes sense. If this is 42, 42, 21, does it get up to 57 meters about? Yeah, that seems about right. Certainly, if you got something that was lower than 42, you know that you messed up. And then we talked about answers for E, because the mass cancels out. Uh, they're all the same. All right, that's how you do conservation of energy problems. Uh, no springs in that yet. So um, number 11... Is this the, the ice flake? The old ice flake in a bowl. So there's the ice flake. The bowl has radius r. Uh, what's that r? It's 22 centimeters. Um, the mass of the ice flake is 2 grams, but uh, I'm just kind of thinking ahead here. I don't see any springs involved here, so just like this last problem, I think that that mass is going to cancel out, so I don't think I'm actually going to need to know that. Um, okay, so what do we have here? Um, what's the speed of the flake when it reaches the bottom of the bowl? Are we just releasing it from rest? Yep. Okay, so uh, for part A, uh, well, if this is the radius, then that's also the radius. And then since it's going from here at rest, this is all gravitational potential. And then down here, if I take this to be the zero height, then down here, it doesn't have any height. So I guess it's all kinetic, right? So that means that um, 1 half mv uh, final down here squared is going to be equal to the mg. I could say mgh, but the height is the radius. So I'm going to say, you, well, you could call it mgr or mg, whatever you want to call that, and then just substitute the r value. Either way, same thing. Uh, mass cancels out. Uh, so that final velocity is equal to the square root of 2gh. This is an expression that you know, this is not uncommon, the situation where you have all potential, gravitational potential, that turns into all kinetic. And if you solve that, you get the square root of 2gh. It's just an expression that comes up a lot. You can't just drop that um, if this is like a free response question. You do need to set this up to get to this, but that should be something that um, seems familiar to you, at least. 
So uh, what's that here? Square root of 2 times 9.8 times 0.22. Square root of 2 times 9.8 times 0.22. That's going to be about 2.1 meters per second. Answer for part B, uh, what would happen if the flake had twice the mass? It would be the same because the mass cancels out. Um, part C, if instead we gave the flake an initial downward speed along the bowl, would the answer increase, decrease, or remain the same? Um, it would increase. Duh. Uh, why would it increase? Well, the initial, the size of the, the pie here, if you want to think about it in terms of the pie charts, um, this would be bigger because you would be like adding on to this a piece of, another piece of pie, some kinetic energy, and that would result in a larger pie here of all kinetic energy at the bottom, which would be, uh, which would result in more velocity at the bottom. And I mean, that should just make sense to you, right? If you give somebody a push at the top of the slide, you're going to be going faster at the bottom. Um, all right. What if you give somebody a push in the, what if this like went higher? What if you gave it a push this way, like upward? How would that change things? Well, if you just think about it in terms of the expressions we have, it doesn't matter what direction, right? You're just taking the velocity. This is like the speed squared. Um, so that wouldn't change this. So adding, that would still add this. You're like, wait, but that's the wrong way. But if you gave it a push up, then it would come back down again. And when it got back down to here, it would have that same amount of push velocity, but in the other direction. So it's effectively the same as um, pushing down. Adds the same amount of energy. Result is the same down here. Um, all right, cool. 13. Um, all right, now we got some spring action here also. Spring, that sounds nice, doesn't it? Springtime. Um, so we got the mass is going to matter. With spring, uh, that's sorry, I changed that to kilograms. 0 0.005 kilograms, same as 5 grams, fired vertically upward using a spring gun. The spring must be compressed to 8 centimeters if the marble is just to reach a target 20 meters above the marble's position on the, com the, compressed, the compressed spring. Okay, so I got my little compressed spring, and... It's going to reach a height 20 meters above that. And this is already compressed. So basically, they're just, it means I don't have to worry about that extra 8 centimeters. They're saying that uh, it's going to go 20 meters up here. OK. Um, what is the change delta? Uh, UG and gravitational potential energy of the marble earth system during the 20 meter ascent. I'm going to make a couple pie charts here. So here at the bottom, um, that's my height zero, so I don't have any gravitational potential energy. Um, but I do have spring energy. And uh, let's see, is it moving? No. So it's all spring potential. And then up here at the top, this is the top because it is turning around there, so it doesn't have any velocity no kinetic energy. Uh, the spring has sprung. So it's, this is just a pure transfer of spring to gravitational potential. Um, OK. So um, what's the change in the gravitational potential energy of the marble? Well, it goes from having none to having 20 meters worth. So for part A, delta UG is equal to uh, m g delta h, which is m g delta h, which is m g 
delta H, which is about 0.98. Ooh, energy units are, don't forget, joules. All right, uh, B. Um, what's the change delta U-S in the elastic potential energy of a spring? Well, if these are the only two things in play, if this increases by this much, then the spring potential, it had all of this energy, like all of this, that's like the size of this pi, right? This is 0.98 joules worth. Well, that all was in the spring, so the spring, the change in spring potential, it went from having it all to not having any Right? It was all stored in the spring, and then pew, not anymore. Um, what's the spring constant of the spring? Well, um, if the spring stored, when the spring was storing all of the energy, it had all 0.98 joules, 1 half K, and they told us in the problem that uh, it was compressed by, was it 8 centimeters? It was. So uh, we can unlock the spring constant there. It's the only thing we don't know in that equation. So let's see, that's 0.98 times 2 divided by 0 0.08 squared. That's about... 300, I'm going to call that 306. Our book probably rounded it to 300, there's two sig figs. Um, right, newtons per meter, that's the units for a spring constant. And last one from this little assignment. A runaway truck with failed brakes is moving... Uh, down grade at 130 kilometers per hour. So it's going to get to the bottom of the ramp with a velocity, here's the ramp, with a velocity of 130 kilometers per hour. I'm going to change that to meters per second. Um, let's do it right now. So one kilometer equals a thousand meters, and one hour is thirty six hundred seconds. So one thirty times a thousand divided by thirty six hundred. That's about thirty six meters per second. Okay, and then it's going to go up this ramp. I'll call this height zero. And it's going to go up here, and that will be the highest point that it reaches. So here, I've got all kinetic energy because uh, it's at height zero and there's no springs. And here, it's, that's the highest it goes, so that means no kinetic energy. So it's one of these situations. UG is equal to K. MGH is equal to 1 half MV squared. Mass doesn't matter. Um, and we're looking for that height. The height is going to be equal to, uh, if I divide over here, that's a v squared over 2g. Another expression comes up sometimes. I wouldn't expect you to memorize that. I would expect you to know how to do this and then do algebra. Um, so that's what, 36 squared over Two times nine point eight six squared divided by thirteen point six uh, sixty six point five meters. All right, um, but we want to know how long the ramp has to be, and it's at a 15 degree angle. So that's just a little bit of a trigonometry problem here. Um, I know that the height that it's going to go to is 66.5 meters, and I know that this angle is 15 degrees, and I would like to know the length of the ramp, which is frictionless, which just, by the way, if you're in the business of designing runaway truck ramps, 
probably you know you don't want to shoot for frictionless. Um, so let's see. That's what's the trig relationship. This is opposite to that, and that's the hypotenuse. So I think we're looking at the sine of fifteen is equal to the height over that length. So the length is going to be sixty six point five divided by the sine of fifteen degrees. That looks like two hundred and fifty seven meters of ramp we're going to need there. Um, that's the answer to part A. Does the minimum length L increase, decrease, or remain the same if B the mass is increased and the speed is decreased? So if the mass, this is the answer for part A here, if the mass, uh, mass does not matter, mass cancels, so that's the same. And then um, if you decrease the speed, Uh, then the height would decrease, right? So if you're doing this kind of proportional reasoning, you want to show the equation here that you're um, that you're referring to. So since height is directly proportional to the square of velocity, decrease of v means uh, decrease of h, and since l is equal to uh, H. H is uh, dependent on L, so decrease of H means a decrease in L. And um, that's it. The, the thing, in case you got confused about why are they fussing about assume the truck is a particle, um, they're just saying, like, if you're, look, if you're worried about how long the ramp is, you might be thinking, oh, well, wait, how long is the truck? Because I'd have to, you know, have the extra for the length of the truck. So they're just saying, don't worry about that. That's all. Um, all right. No free pizza.